Hello everyone, this is Blake Wurtz, DB71, back to do a recent vinyl find, although you don't normally see that from me because generally I like to elaborate more on the records than showing a bunch of covers, but since there are so few, I can say something about them. Uh, so this is actually going to be a combination of uh, a record show that I went to last weekend. I met... Um, Chris at Dixieland Farms, and uh, I also met uh, Memphis Final Gym and the Misses. Uh, they made a trip over to Carolina and uh, spent the day uh, digging with us at the show. And I also met uh, met Timothy Timothy Henderson. Um, I think it's uh, Timothy Jim Henderson or something like that uh, online. Uh, anyway, it's great to meet them. Uh, of course. Uh, it's sad to say that uh, it's been this long to, to meet someone local like Timothy. Um, anyway, we did get to meet, and it was great to see Memphis Final Gym and the Misses, uh, the lady behind the camera. Uh, very cool folks, and uh, of course, always fun to hang out with Chris. Um, so, got picked up a few things, uh, only three things at that show, and uh, then I picked up a couple things yesterday at my local record shop, Lunchbox uh, Records, um, the only real record shop in, in Charlotte area. Uh, I say that tongue-in-cheek because there is another uh, not-so-independent independent store um, that, that caters to a different crowd. Well, anyway, uh, so what you're hearing in the background... Um, my last video, I raved about a, uh, a gift that was given to me, still within reach, uh, of course, because I've been spending it, William Parker Quartet. Um, and so I did some digging around and found out that uh, I do have a couple of other pieces uh, where uh, William Parker is the performer, well, the bass player, performer on, and uh, we'll get th to those some other time. Um, they were both. They both happen to be uh, no business releases, and I, I really should do try to do a no business video. Uh, no business records is a great uh, label out of Lithuania, but we're not there. We're here. Uh, so just happened to find this in the um, lunchbox. Uh, we'll start there first, since this is what you're listening to. Nini Morgia, I think, is how you pronounce the guitarist's name. And William Parker, Prism. Um, there isn't much information on this at all. There's nothing in it. Uh, whoa! There's there's really nothing in it. Uh, come on back, yeah. Uh, and this is the, the the back. I'll try to show you a picture if it'll focus on here. Um, Ultramarine uh, Records. Um, this happened to be in the new uh, new jazz releases section at Lunchbox, and what it is uh, is a four-sided. Um, dang, this is having a hard time focusing. Come on back, come back. Hello. Four-sided, all prisms, and essentially, they're very experimental bass and some electronic gadgetry and some guitar. Um, thrown in the mix, just experimenting with ideas and, and colors and textures and, and themes and feelings and stuff like that. Uh, a very good uh, headphone listening experience, um, I must say. Uh, listening to it this way, you're probably not catching all of it, of course, with this camera and well, you know how it is. Anyway. I uh, picked this up, uh, very, very different than the William Parker Quartet stuff, but uh, very interesting nonetheless, uh, especially for folks um, that are into the very experimental stuff. Um, Anders, I think you would really dig this. Um, probably uh, Dave Fatback Funk uh, may get into something like this. Uh, Dave Sequoia Flame, this is probably up your alley too. Um, not so sure about others that are that are want to hang on to some more traditional jazz. It's probably probably not a piece you want to pick up. Anyway, I got this uh, 2LP thing. Really, really nice. Uh, I'm going to 
continue to expand my William Parker knowledge and uh, I'll, I'll keep you up to date on that. The other piece I found in uh, Lunchbox was um, Joe McPhee, uh, Survival Unit 3. Um, take this out of the sleeve here. Uh, very neat, simple cover with, uh, I don't know, again, a really, really nice uh, screen print on the front and, and on the back. Uh, Joe McPhee, Survival Unit 3, Synchronicity. Uh, this is Harmonic Convergence 001, uh, apparently the first release uh, of 300. Um, this is, uh, I would say, pretty typical uh, Joe McPhee kind of stuff. Uh, really, really um, out there, kind of in the vein of... Uh, the, the Bratzmans and the Gustafsons and stuff like that, you know, you, it's it's really heady stuff. Oh, it also comes with a, a CD that has actually an extra track on, on it too, so um, they couldn't fit that on the vinyl. Um, again, no no other real information other than, than what's here, um, recorded in 2007, uh, live on and then just transferred over uh, to vinyl uh, again another good listening experience uh, uh, challenging challenging to say the, the least and again probably the same the same folks that would be interested in this uh, other William Parker release would be interested in the Joe McPhee uh, release now then we go to the uh, the record show I bought three pieces uh, turns out that the show here in Charlotte really isn't good for me. Uh, I don't buy rock and I don't buy pop and I don't buy soul and and that pretty much <laughs> rules out everybody at that show, uh, at least the ones that, that, that have been happening lately. Uh, but I did pick up two good pieces. One, surprisingly enough, Art Ensemble of Chicago Nice Guys on ECM. Uh, I've only had a couple in my hands. Uh, ever since uh, learning about Art Ensemble, but they have been beat to, to death. Uh, so I finally got a good listenable copy um, that that will go in my collection. Really enjoy it. Um, <clears throat> the same cast of characters are, are, are in, well, you know who Art Ensemble is, and then they got Don Moye uh, on percussion in this one. And probably my favorite track on here is actually the last one. Uh, uh, Dreaming of the Master. It's really, really, really good. Um, but in general, it's it's a good it's a good album. Um, I can I can understand that it uh, it, it would meet all of the ECM requirements, so it's not so out there as as the ACM can get. Um, so it's pretty pretty good listen. And then I found a, a used copy of this reissue. Uh, Archie Sheps, uh, Yasmina, a black woman. Um, you know these uh, these big actual uh, reissues. I mean, they're really good, high quality. Blah 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 blah. Uh, as far as the music itself, um, the front side, uh, uh, Yasmina, um, really, really, really good. Uh, I enjoyed that. Uh, the back, the the side to Sonny's back and body and soul. You know they're okay, uh, but they don't they don't live up to the front side as far as I'm concerned. But nonetheless, I was happy to, to get it um, at the show no, nonetheless. And then another uh, is a uh, classical related, which will lead me right into where I want to go next on, on topic. Um, uh, just I mean it's a percussion compilation thing, but it's got uh, uh, Milhau and uh, Bartok. Um, Two, two modern composers that, that I'm reading about, which leads me to um, this next topic. Um, so, I, with the, the Opus One uh, revelation that I've had recently, uh, in order to try to, to, to build a foundation for modern classical, uh, I'm trying to teach myself more about modern classical. And I, I picked up this book long ago, really. I, I've had this at least a year, maybe two years now. Alex Ross says, The Rest is Noise. And it is a dense, thick book, as, as you can expect for, for, for trying to cover such a, such a broad topic. And 
what I've been doing is uh, I've been reading a little at a time, um, or a lot at a time, and, and taking a lot of notes, and going back and listening to some of the pieces that, that he spends more time on, uh, showing, you know, how how it's modern and and how it it it, it influenced uh, music uh, composers down the road and things like that. So it's good in that sense that it's it's forcing me to pick up some of the the modern classical, the 20th century stuff that I have and listening to it. And so that that brought up a question as I was uh, taking notes. Um, I'm wondering, and this is a question out to you, um, would you be interested in me putting together uh, a few videos? I mean, it's probably, you know, maybe three or four, maybe five videos, just walking through, just highlighting some of the uh, the 20th century composers and the pieces that, that at least Alex Ross uh, believes are some of the most modern of, of, of what they did. Uh, um, I also have a couple of other books that I can also flip to to get you know some second or third uh, references to this. And so I guess what I'm proposing to do is I can go through here and, and I'll notate the things that, that, that I'm learning and then come back and then do like two or three composers and just kind of walk through some of their work um, things that you can note down yourself so when you're out digging and you see something like um, this was one of the ones mentioned actually uh, bar talks music for string instruments percussion and celesta you know that's one of the ones that was mentioned um, and you may say, okay, I've heard Blake talk about it. Blake said, Alex Rocks thinks it's something good, so maybe I'll pick it up for a dollar or two dollars, and then you can you can learn it with me. And again, uh, all I'm trying to do is uh, build myself a foundation of 20th century classical uh, because I, I want to learn it. I, I want to know it. I'm kind of bored with the, with the older, true classical music um, of the 17th, 18th, and 19th century. Um, you know, I've heard that just over and over and over, and, and, I, and I'm ready to move on. And so the 20th century has got my attention because of the Opus One label and the CRI stuff. And so I figure if I'm learning uh, what came before, then I have a better appreciation for uh, the really modern stuff and the experimental and the avant-garde stuff that came afterwards. So that's out there, uh, just giving you a heads up. I mean, if you're interested in me pursuing that and doing some videos, just let me know, uh, either in the comments or through personal, private message, or whatever you want to do. And uh, so, I guess that does it. Um, again, Van Sekofuck, thank you for the uh, William Parker Quartet uh, gift. Uh, it led me on a, yet another path to to learn what I can about William Parker, and I was able to pick up a really really interesting, as you can hear in the background, um, a release called Prism. Um, very very experimental. Uh, again, very neat listen with uh, with the headphones. Uh, and speaking of headphones, Chris, you probably would dig this too. I bet um, Dixie Lamb Farm. And oh, maybe Chris. <laughs> 4127 basket may actually dig it too if he doesn't already have it right uh so i'll check out and uh hope everyone's had a good day today and we'll get back to you again soon bye bye